Hello and welcome to another episode of the Creative Coffee Break with myself, Twin Wim from Loch Ness Knitting. And joining us today is Orla Stevens. So I'm not going to speak for you, Orla. We're just going to dive straight in and have you tell us all about where you're based and what you do and if you can show us a little bit of your work. Perfect. Um, so yeah, hello, I'm Orla and I am currently based in Glasgow and I am a predominantly an artist, so I work between painting and textiles. Um, and most recently I've been developing uh, the kind of conversation between the two practices. So I've been looking at um, how I can take elements of printing and painting and merge them together on different kinds of surfaces. Um, so I predominantly make things for interior design. Um, so I'm working on a collection of um, works on linen. So it goes between things for like fine art practices and then it also goes for um, I'm making some blankets and cushions. So here I can show you, I'm going to sew this up later on today. So this is what I'm working on today. Um, but I painted these the other day. Um, so this is going to be a cushion. So basically, um, my work responds to like sense of place and Scottish landscape and seascapes. So I've been doing a lot of work researching around the Outer Hebrides and in response to the North Atlantic Sea. Um, so yeah, so this, um, these places have basically been feeding into my practice and thinking about how we connect to place and what it feels like. Um, I've been also, I'm a participant on the Oral Textile Project, which Dwin is also um, a part of. And this has really been feeding into a lot of my um, practice outside the project as well. It's kind of been focusing, um, like just thinking about how we use our other senses and how we engage with place in different ways. And um, so really how we hear a place and what that sound can be felt like and how we can interpret that into a color or a mark. Um, so it's been really influencing my mark making um, practice and use of color. Um, and I'll show you um, some work on linen, um, two of my little paintings I've been doing. So these are all gonna be released in April. Um, so this is a sneak peek, um, <laughs> but here we go. Um, so I've been using elements of embroidery um, and then it's, they're all painted using textile screen printing binders. Um, and there's some, some more like free machine stitching here. And I'll show you the back, because the back's interesting. Um, and then you can see how it comes through on the back. Um, so yeah, so I studied um, screen printing at university um, in Edinburgh. Um, and then while I was there, I also fell in love with painting. So um, ever since I graduated in 2018, it's been a kind of exploration of how I can um, kind of use these two two loves between the textiles and the painting and like and blend them together. That's fascinating and you've spoken a little bit about the landscape there um, is there something that particular that inspires you? Um, so I was I basically um, I grew up on like loads of um, camping and walking holidays so I've always um, been brought up with a kind of strong um, connection to place has been a big part of um, yeah just my upbringing so I think that's really where it started and um, I think a lot of it actually was from um, my dad got me into it he's really into photography and he's really into like looking at things in different ways and like um, photographing like really macro zoomed focuses of like moss and rocks and like just exploring how you see things in different ways and I think his Kind of engagement in his practice then um, really influenced me um subconsciously when i was little and then yeah it's really that, i think that's what i like doing is like exploring like how and why we connect to landscapes i got into landscape painting and exploring landscape because it basically made me feel really good when like when i'm outside it's when i feel most relaxed and connected to myself and i think a lot of other people get that too and i just think that's something really important and yeah, it's when I feel happiest, I think, is when I'm outside. So it was really, it felt kind of natural to explore something that felt good. Um, yeah. That's a lovely starting point for, for your own work and maybe for other people's work. So if somebody wanted to um, be inspired by you and pick up on some of the things that you said today, where could they find materials and how could they get started on something similar? What would you recommend? Um, well... Firstly, it really doesn't need to be expensive, especially for a painting. Like, 
for when I run workshops and things like you can use things even from Poundland like it really doesn't matter and um, often when I feel creatively stuck I go into Poundland and pick up some random um, things like wire sponges and stuff and like just anything random cloths and um, car cleaning equipment just like pick it up get some cheap acrylic paint um, and some paper and literally just close your eyes and make a big mess for starters because if you've got a mess then it's no longer precious and you don't need to stress about making something good I think that's the kind of main thing don't try and make a masterpiece um, and just have fun with it and then it'll start to build and you'll understand what you're doing a bit more People say something similar with the writing that it's always worse to start with a blank sheet of paper. So one of my teachers used to always say, even if you just write your name and the date at the top, it's not a blank sheet of paper anymore. So that intimidation is, is gone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because I think the main thing is not to get caught up in, in the pressure. It's like the process and the enjoyment of that creation. It's not really necessarily about the end goal um, when you're making something. That's lovely. So, so thank you very much for your time today. If somebody uh, wants to find out more about you, where can we find your work online or, or on the socials if you've got some contact details that uh, we can look for? So you can look me up here. It's just my name, www.orlastevens.com. Or if you type my name, Orla Stevens, into Instagram too, you'll find me there. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you everyone for listening to our creative coffee break today. We've got lots of these videos up on the YouTube channel, so check out our other participants and we'll be back with another Scottish maker later in the week. Thank you.